welcome back to Master Guitar Frets and YouTube Guitar School. My name is Jörg. Just a quick shout out to all my subscribers. Thank you for supporting my channel. I really appreciate it. If you are a beginner and you just landed on lesson number five, please start with lesson number one or go check it out and see what level you're at. In lesson five, we will learn the notes on the G string. And then you can figure out the B string by yourself because you're going to be skilled enough now. Then we're going to work on the C7 chord, the F7 chord, and the G7 chord. Of course, we're also going to do the B chord as well as building on to our blues progression. Okay, let's go check out lesson number five. Notes on a G. Okay, the notes on the G string are as follows. Open is G. So after G, a full step comes A, second fret. After A comes a full step to B, fourth fret. After B comes a half step to C, fifth fret. After C comes D, full step, 7th fret. After D comes E, full step, ninth fret. After E comes only a half step to F on the 10th fret. And after F comes G for the octave. Let's look at the C7, the F7, and the G7. Okay, let's look at the C7 chord. Okay, so we know C, very simple, you learned that one. And that one is actually quite easy because all you need to do is to put your pinky on the third fret on the G string. That's simple. So practice that with your pinky, okay? Off, on, off, on. Okay, next let's have a look at the F chord, F7. It's basically the F chord with adding uh, the pinky pressing down on the B string, fourth fret. Pinky down. That's a little bit of a stretch. Personally, I play the F7 as a bar chord. It's easier for me. We're going to do bar chords. We're actually going to learn the first one today, the B chord. But a bar chord, you're basically barring whatever fret you need to. So we're here in the first fret. We're barring all six strings down. Okay. Then the middle finger goes on the second fret on the G string. And the ring finger goes on the third fret A string. So that's your bar F7 chord. So you can try that or you learn it. Next we want to look at the G7 chord. We know the G chord. You've learned that. So now what we're doing, we're gonna put the index finger on the first fret high E string, the middle finger, second fret A string, and the ring finger on the third fret E string. Switching. 
that's quite a move like you're flipping your whole finger position uh, around basically so it's quite a move so you can practice that you get better at it now there's some people that play the G open G string same shape but instead of using these three fingers they use these three fingers so index ring and the pinky and they might do that because it's a quicker switch to C and it's also a quicker switch to the G7 because all you have to do is for G7 you just lift your pinky and you push down your index finger on the first fret high E string however I play it like this, always did. Let's play a progression so you can practice your seven chords, which is covered. C, C7, F, F7, C, C7, C, C7. C7. for you to practice your seven chords and get that pinky working and flipping around from uh, G to C. All right. And flipping around from G to G7, which is such a, a big move. It's a big move. So you're gonna make some really big moves in this lesson. Of course, we're also gonna do the B chord, as well as adding some cool stuff to the blues progression. Next, we're gonna do the first bar chord, and it's the B chord, because the because the B chord is a is a chord that uh, is used quite a bit, so it's nice to know that one. So basically, this bar chord belongs to the A shaped bar chord because we're basically using the A shape. Remember A, three fingers, right, right here. Uh, pressing down on the second fret D G and B string that's an A shape now we're moving that down to the fourth fret and we have a B but that's just a triad and it doesn't sound good if we're playing the rest of the strings so to make it play fuller we're barring the whole second fret and we we'll use our ring finger to push all these down and the middle finger kind of sticks up like you're giving somebody the finger so right that's normal at the beginning so that's gonna take a whole new a whole new strengthening of your uh, ring finger because the ring finger is doing all the heavy lifting so the bar you put your whole index finger across go close to the fret play that make sure it all sounds clean and then you put your ring finger on it and the ring finger goes on a kind of flat okay don't point it down you kind of and then you lift it you lift it at the at, at your joint to kind of not touch the bottom E string. So you can just play that. Right? 
actually just practice that. Don't overdo it. Practice for a few minutes until your fingers get tired and then go move on to something else and then practice it again later next day, but build it into your practice. You will master it as so many other guitarists have. And now it's frustrating at the beginning, but the cool thing about these is that you can move them. You can move them down. You move them down the fret, and uh, I'll show you some other neat stuff that you can do once you uh, master these. Okay, so the B again. So that ring finger is doing all the heavy lifting. Thumb on the neck needs to kind of press forward. So I don't know if you can see that. I'll try to turn around here. Yeah, so my thumb sits on the neck and counter pushes so that I have lots of power ouch for, uh, for my ring finger, okay? Also, your, your arm here needs to come close to the body when you do bar chords. If you're out here, it's gonna be hard. As, as I play, my arm changes direction to, if I need to reach something, if I need to stretch, I have to come closer to my body. If I play an open chord, I can be a little bit more relaxed. But when I play a bar chord, I'm actually moving, as you can see. Watch now. So my arms coming in closer to the body to give me the room for my fingers. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So again, you can practice it by just pressing down your ring finger on the A shape. You might need to lift your guitar a little bit too. Lift your neck up a little bit. That will help too. Just try different things, okay? Don't give up right away. You can have your guitar down here because you would have, to, you're running out of room. And sometimes lifting your neck up a little bit will help too. So that's why I'm always wearing a shoulder strap, right? So I can put it in place where I need to. Practice that and have fun with it. we're gonna add some new stuff to the blues progression okay in the last lesson we added palm muting and we added that cool little note on the B power chord that little stretch and I hope you had a chance to to master that and if not just keep practicing so today we're gonna to add some other stuff we're gonna add an intro and the intro can also be used after as an outro, and I'm gonna show you that. The intro, we'll use middle finger, ring finger, fourth fret, we are on a G4, and we are on a E4 with the ring finger. The, the B string is played open all the way, and it has to ring out, so try not to mute it, okay? So make sure that your finger position is perfect. Uh, with the prick, we go down, up, we're gonna go down, up, up, okay? So that's gonna sound like this. Move up, move up. Now we're gonna change. We're just gonna pluck the middle finger on the first fret G string, and we're gonna hit it down and we're gonna hit the high E open. So that sounds like this. Okay, next we're gonna do open A, first fret A, second fret A. 
What we do, we're going to hit the string open and we pluck each note. So when I pluck, I go up, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. So always when you pluck strings, always go up and down. We got this so far. So after this, after we want to go into a B7. And we're already in the right position for the B. So just place your fingers as you have learned in lesson number four. That's the B. And then we'll start with our E blues. So let's see what we can add here. We can add that. So basically with your pinky, you're hitting on the fifth, fifth fret on the A string for the E blues. Then you can take that one down, the A blues. So basically the pinky on the 5th fret D string, right? So those are the two things you can add to this blues now. You can play them all the time or you can leave some out. You know, blues can be improvised. You make your own blues. The other thing we can add are a couple more notes. So E, open. Because you're already in the position here, leave that finger on the second uh, fret A, okay, and then just open E, hammer on, or play them, pick him. You can hammer on, you can pick him. You're gonna get different sounds. There's no right or no wrong. So you can do your own thing. There we go. So you can add those parts to our blues progression. Okay. Now, how would we play the intro as an outro? Well, let's come out of the turnaround. The turnaround is DB. Okay, so you go to A once. That's the time. And then you go back in it. Okay, so let's do that again. We have to turn around. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Right, so one, and then the rest of the count happens down here. So that's how it's done. Okay, so I'm gonna play the whole thing for you, a short version. Throw in the B7 and then put in an E7. Okay, so that's it for that blues progression. Obviously, there's tons of other stuff you can do, but I think that's going to give you some tools to improvise and to discover and uh, have fun with this little blues progression and grow it yourself. In the next lesson, we're going to tackle the E shape bar chord and uh, also the A shape bar chord again 
and we're going to connect them to the strings, the corresponding strings you learn, the E string and the A string. So you know always in what, what key you're playing your bar chord in. We're also going to tackle the minor pentatonic scale in each of the uh, bar chords so you know exactly uh, where the minor pentatonic scale is as well as the major scale. Lots of fun. Thanks for watching.